Hey folks, welcome back to another fly tying edition of How to Tie with your guide, Shannon Messer from Tucky CG Fly Shop. And here in my Norvice fly tying system, I have a size eight Hannock dry fly hook. I know it's a little bit big, but it's uh, just the one I had lying here close by. And I am going to tie for you today a fly called the Orange Snipe. It's a good pattern uh, late summer in the fall. I actually start f fishing orange. Golly, say fishing, Shannon. I actually start fishing orange flies kind of really midsummer, to be honest with you. Maybe a little bit sooner. Um, I've actually already this year here in the spring taken a lot of uh, uh, native specks, uh, you know, brook, brook trout uh, on this particular pattern uh, tied parachute style. But anyway, we are going to be using some black thread. Here I have some 10 Vivas black. And our wings today are actually going to be, once again, some wings that I've cut using the fingernail clippers, and they're going to be white in color. Now, if you want to tie this fly with a uh, wing a calf body or a calf tail, certainly do so. It's going to give it even more uh, floatability. Uh, out of this fly but you feel free to do so you can do whatever you want you're the master you're the one with the paintbrush in your hand and have some fun with it so i want to stand these wings up here right quick hopefully you can see that pretty good there and i want to just kind of go in here and just do some separation wraps and the way that i place those on there the natural curves of those were actually taking them away from each other so there we go well, all right so i'm going to run my thread back to the back real quick just like that. See, we got us a nice little foundation. We're ready to rock and roll. Uh, next thing we're gonna tie in is gonna be our tail. Our tail today is actually gonna be out of some deer hair. And the one thing I need to caution you is when you put the hair in your hair stacker, make sure you put the tips in first, okay? I don't think I was clear on that before but you're supposed to put your tips in first when you put them in your hair stacker. So that way, when they come out, they are aligned the right way. Now, as far as the length of the tail here, I'm gonna make it about the length of the shank of the hook. So it's gonna be somewhere in there. I wanna take my scissors here. I wanna trim off some of these butt ends and I wanna make some loose wraps. There we go, like that. Kind of come up here like this. If you pull on it really tight, it's going to cause it to flare out. Now I will do it. Then I'm going to come right back over top of it. It will still spin on you, so okay? So as you come, just kind of hold it, keeping it up on top of the hook like so. And if it flares out too much, all you got to do is put a little bit of a loose wrap around those areas there, okay? Now this is a fly that's going to float really well with that tail like that, okay? That's not a problem. Loose wrap, loose wrap loose wrap. Just going to bring it in just like that. I want to smooth out the body. Try to give us a nice little base here for this particular pattern. It's a great mountain pattern here. As I mentioned before, you could actually use some uh, hair wings if you want to. It will make it float even better if you like, but there we go. Really starting to bring that in, dial that in quite a bit. Okay. You can see here in my Norvice. I'm gonna get back here to the back a little bit. Our next material that we're gonna to use today is some polypropylene yarn. Gotta thank our good friend Jim Estes for getting this for me. This stuff is really hard to get in the right color, and this is the right color for sure. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut me a small section here of that yarn. As you can see, that's pretty thick right there. I want to start separating it out. I want to pull it from the center. Kind of pull it outwards like that. Like so. You want to discard the other side for another time. Look at that right there. That's still quite a bit. I want to do the same thing. I want to separate it out kind of from the center. Get that. And there we go. See what we've got right there. Hopefully I've got enough there. Trim off that edge a little bit. I did forget I was tying on a bigger hook here. Hope y'all are doing good, man. Hope y'all are doing well. Really appreciate you guys watching the videos. And with that being said, how about you give us a 
give us a, a like and a, just hit that subscribe button there. To, that way you can be sure to see some other really good fly time videos and other content there from Tucker CG Flash. Yeah. All right. Got my bobbin uh, out of the way. I'm just going to start wrapping this up. As you can see right through there, see how that's laying out nice and flat. Going to come up here like this. Going to kind of wrap back just a little smidge in there. Kind of be able to taper up on it and then come forward. Boy, I cut this close on this one, didn't I? Wings are wanting to twist on me just a smidge. Yeah, it's about as far as I'm going to be able to go with it. Gonna come back here. Gonna grab that. Just let it switch on me a little bit. Work good shape though. Good shape. Just like that. I wanna get these wings out of the way here right quick. As you can see, man, the thing about this poly is it makes a awesome, awesome body. So I'm gonna get my fine point scissors here from Dr. Slick. I had my other scissors in my hand a while ago. Just like that. Just clean it up just a smidge. That makes a great body and when that actually gets wet it has a little bit of veining effect that goes along with it a translucent look it's awesome all right so i'm going to come in here build up a little bit of a thread down and our next material is going to be our hackle feather okay got it like in there like that just an awesome clean body right there okay i'm going to take our hackle feather here and this one here is more of a furnace color but but certainly coachman brown or brown or a super dark ginger whatever you have lying around there will work just fine for this pattern and i have got the bottom barbule stripped off of that right there and i've got me a tie-in point here with my stem i'm going to lay that up here on the hook itself that may be a little bit too long i'm going to trim it one two three I'll get that secured and get a good base right in through there Kind of even that up a little bit. Okay, come in there, come in front. I want to try to make sure that the bottom in through here is almost level, okay? As much as we can, that will go a long way of making sure that hackle wraps nice and smoothly in through there. Got us a nice ramp going forward here, looking really good. Kind of getting away from some of the features of the Norvice right here. I could be spinning this bad boy up. 88 out the gate. Quicker than a hiccup, but I didn't. Come in here and make sure everything's nice and clean. Gonna grab my hackle feather. Gonna get some wraps started. See one, two, right in through there. And be sure you pick a hackle feather that's size appropriate to the size of fly you're tying. Uh, hackle gauge, but also you can use the hook size as well. Put up there in the hook. The one thing to keep in mind is as you're tying and you're adding thread wraps, a lot of times you don't need as big of a feather because of the extra thread wraps you're putting in there. And I want to hackle this one up here really good. It's a good floater, just like that. So meaning if you're tying a size 12, sometimes I use a 14 hackle with that particular pattern. Uh, if you do 12, the hackle may end up being too big. Kind of get that back on there like so. Do that one more time. Or if you do like me, you can take your fingers, come in here, make sure you clip hold, boom, it's in there like that. All right, gonna reach in here, gonna clip off our hackle. Make sure it's all nice and clean. Hope y'all can see that quite well. See, we got our wings in there just like that. It's starting to look real pretty. It'll look pretty, it fishes really good. I'm gonna take our whip finisher right here. I'm gonna come in here and grab this, one, two, three one two three if you're kind of curious about this oh i just broke it that's twice i've broken vivas today that normally doesn't happen but having that redundancy built into it right there really helps but um if you're kind of curious about these patterns um certainly hit us up there at the shop hit me up be glad to help you with those um we sell a book in the shop that uh, roger lowe has it's got a lot of these patterns in it if you're looking to tie some of these old Smoky Mountain patterns, it's a great place to start. You'll find some of our family flies in it. You'll find some Fred Hall patterns in it. Uh, uh, Mr. Coffee. Um, um, 
uh, Charles Messers in there, some of Roger Lowe's patterns himself that he's come up with also. So it's a really good starting point for that. We have those books available. Just hit us up at the shop. We can get those in a mail out to you as well. Uh, be sure, like I said, hit, hit like and hit that subscribe button so you won't miss any future videos. This fly here is a great fly. Uh, ran into, it's where I met Nick Carter, was on Deep Creek one day and made a suggestion that maybe should be kind of fishing some orange flies and he did and nick, nick is a writer and he actually has a book out uh, and uh, he made a reference to that we've we've talked about that particular afternoon where i kind of helped him with some orange up there on deep creek but this here is a good one for sure a great fly here in our streams of western north carolina give it a try i'm sure you'll like it uh, Shannon at tuckflyshop.com, 1-828-488-3333. We look forward to hearing from you folks. Take care and thanks for watching.